everybody welcome back to my channel and to another video and in this one I'm going to be going through lots of different watercolor techniques that you guys can try to make your watercolor paintings look more interesting and to make them stand out more and whilst I'm going through these watercolor techniques I'm going to be demonstrating them using this jellyfish painting that I recently finished where I use a lot of different techniques Let's start off with masking fluid. Masking fluid for me is a key tool that I have in my watercolor kit and it makes preserving highlights so much easier. So I like to use a masking fluid pen and I'm using the Molotol masking fluid pen, but you can also get it in bottles and you can use a paintbrush to apply the masking fluid. And basically what this is good for is it helps you to preserve highlights like I'm doing with these little jellyfish tentacles. I'm using the masking fluid to preserve them so that when I add the watercolors, I don't have to worry about getting any watercolor paint on these areas because the masking fluid forms a latex that stops the watercolor getting in those areas. The next technique I wanna talk about is the wet on wet method. A lot of you may already know this technique, but I utilize this in almost every single painting that I do. So this is basically where you wet the paper and then add in darker colors or other colors and they bleed out into each other to give a really soft effect and they bleed out and give no harsh edges. So this is great if you wanna do blurry backgrounds or if you wanna create depth in your painting because you can do an out of focus background and then have a subject that is in more focus and it just helps to create depth in your work. In this case, I'm using this technique to create the water look for the jellyfish and I'm using different colors like blues and purples as well as blacks. Another technique I'm using for the water background is I'm dropping in water drops into the paint and what you'll start to see is it creates these starry lighter effects in the darker colors. So I dropped in some of that onto the darker black areas and throughout the background. And when you add water into the watercolor paint, it does create these starry effects, but it's more obvious in a minute when I do it on the jellyfish. Another technique you can use is salt. Salt is amazing for creating winter landscapes, a snowy effect, galaxies, or just to make your painting more interesting. So once again, I'm just sprinkling a little bit of this onto the background whilst it's still pretty wet. You do wanna do this whilst your layer is wet. If it's too dry, then it's not going to work properly. So I'm gonna show you a little clip now of this effect on just a swatch so you can really see how cool this effect can be if you want it to be really dramatic. And I use this a lot in loads of different types of paintings just to create more of an interesting effect or like I said, to create things like a fleece texture or even snow. So it can be really cool to use in expressive paintings. Now we're moving on to painting in the jellyfish. And like I said, I do use the water drop technique more on the hood of the jellyfish. I don't know what that part's called. And so you'll see how the water drops really can create that starry, cool, interesting effect. And it can be a nightmare if you do this by accident and you don't want this look. So if you're ever trying to blend out an area, don't just use pure water. Otherwise it will give you these little starry clusters, this cauliflower effect. So you can see how it's creating more of this cauliflower effect. It's a lot more obvious on this jellyfish area. And all I'm doing is loading up my paintbrush with water. I've also sprinkled a bit more salt onto that jellyfish just to add even more of an interesting texture. Now let's move on to the next technique that I like to use, and that is using tissue. And tissue is great for not only adding more texture and some lighter patterns, but it's great for creating highlights or lifting up the paint. It only works whilst the paint is still wet, but it's great if you make a mistake and you wanna lift up the paint or if you just wanna create a highlight or cool patterns. You can even experiment with the type of tissue you're using because certain tissues have more of that pattern to them, like the bumps, whereas some tissues are a lot softer. So you can really experiment with that. What you may know is I love to use splatters. If you've watched multiple of my videos, you'll know that I love splatters everywhere. So I like to add in a lot of splatters using different watercolor colors. So for example, I used a lot of pink on the jellyfish. So I'm adding pink splatters onto the water background to 
tie in those colors together. I'll also add in splatters using oranges and just a variety of colors really. And I will be doing it with the gouache later on with the white gouache, I'd like to add splatters. So if you are interested in getting that really expressive look, then splatters are a great way to do that and to give it a lot more of a cool, I don't know how to say it, it's just very expressive. I am removing the masking fluid. You wanna make sure that you wait for your painting to completely dry before you try and remove this. And I'm using a tea towel, just a cloth to help me remove this a lot easier. It's a lot easier to do it with this sort of cloth than to go in and try and rub it all off with your fingers. It can wear your fingers down. And I know from experience that it can really hurt if you've got a lot of masking fluid to remove. So it's just a lot quicker to use a cloth like this. Now, if you do want to see how I created this painting in real time and follow along with me, then I have got the full real time tutorial for this over on my Patreon, as well as over 300 other real time tutorials. For each of my tutorials, I offer full narration, the reference image, a sketch outline, and also a full materials list. So you really can follow along with me every step of the way. When you sign up, you'll get instant access to all of the tutorials I have ever uploaded, as well as new tutorials every month. And it's just for a small amount per month. I don't just do tutorials for watercolor, there's also lots of charcoal and colored pencil tutorials as well, as well as other mediums. So I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check that out. But let's move on to using the wet on dry method. So this is what I use to add in all of the details. And I usually do this once I've waited for previous layers to dry and once I've removed masking fluid if I've used it. And to do this, I like to use a water brush pen a lot of the times or smaller paint brushes. And I'm just using this to add in more contrast to the painting because if you want your painting to stand out, it's so important that you have a good contrast, which basically means you want your shadows to be as dark as they need to be and also have your, have your highlights. So I'm just gonna go in now and I'm building up more shadows, adding more details throughout the jellyfish and throughout all of the tentacles as well. So this is a key part of the painting process if you want your painting to stand out. It's so important that you focus on your values and using the wet on dry method means that you're getting in all of the details, it's not bleeding out, you can get really crisp lines and crisp edges. So you'll be able to use this technique as long as the previous layer of the paper is already dry, the previous layer of watercolor. If it's still wet, however, then your details will bleed out and they won't be crisp. So if you want sharp details, make sure your painting's dry before you go in and add them. So I'm just darkening up around the little strings, the little tentacles, and I'm just adding lots more shadow throughout the hood of the jellyfish as well, and even around the jellyfish, around the edges. And this really helps to make the painting pop and it takes it to that next level. Even if you have loads of interesting effects going on, if you don't have your contrast down and your values correct, then it simply won't stand out. So this is such a key part of the painting process to make your painting look as good as it can. The next thing that I wanna talk about is highlights. So one way that you can create highlights is by masking areas off at the start. But if you wanna add in extra highlights at the end, then I like to use the Winsor & Newton Designers Gouache in the shade Permanent White. So I like to go over areas like the strings, I'm adding a few more as well. And I'll use this to add any highlights that I feel like I need to. So this helps to create that contrast that we're talking about, making sure that we're utilizing the full range of the value scale. And you can use it to create things like splatters as well. And I'm also using it, I'm using the end of the paintbrush actually, the other end to create little dots on the water as well on the top, as well as tapping on my brush to create splatters. So I look at the reference and I just decide where I need to go brighter. I look for the brightest areas and I just use the gouache to add them in. The more water you mix in with the gouache, the more translucent the highlights will be. Whereas if you add less water, they're gonna be really nice and bright. But here you can see the final paint and you can see how many different techniques I use throughout this process. And I hope you learned something new throughout this video and you've learned some new techniques that you wanna give a try. 
This was just a brief overview of the painting process. So like I said, if you do want to see the real time tutorial for this, then it is available on my Patreon. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even take that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.